A continent is one of several very large land masses on Earth. They are generally identified by convention rather than any strict criteria, with up to seven regions commonly regarded as continents. These are Asia, Africa, North America, South America, Antarctica, Europe, and Australia. In geology, areas of continental crust include regions covered with water. Definitions and Application By convention, continents are understood to be large, continuous, discrete masses of land, ideally separated by expanses of water. Many of the seven most commonly recognized continents identified by convention are not discrete land masses, separated completely by water. The criterion large leads to arbitrary classification. Greenland, with a surface area of 2,166,086 square kilometers is considered the world's largest island, while Australia, at 7,617,930 square kilometers is deemed the smallest continent. The Earth's major land masses all have coasts on a single, continuous world ocean which is divided into a number of principal oceanic components by the continents and various geographic criteria. The definitions of continents are sometimes extended beyond the major land masses, in a way that every bit of land on Earth is included in a continent. Extent of continents The narrowest meaning of continent is that of a continuous area of land or mainland, with the coastline and any land boundaries forming the edge of the continent. In this sense the term continental Europe is used to refer to mainland Europe, excluding islands such as Great Britain, Ireland, Malta and Iceland, and the term continent of Australia may refer to the mainland of Australia, excluding Tasmania and New Guinea. Similarly, the continental United States refers to the 48 contiguous states in Central North America and may include Alaska in the northwest of the continent while excluding Hawaii in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. From the perspective of geology or physical geography, continent may be extended beyond the confines of continuous dry land to include the shallow, submerged adjacent area and the islands on the shelf, as they are structurally part of the continent. From this perspective the edge of the continental shelf is the true edge of the continent, as shorelines vary with changes in sea level. In this sense the islands of Great Britain and Ireland are part of Europe, while Australia and the island of New Guinea together form a continent. As a cultural construct, the concept of a continent may go beyond the continental shelf to include oceanic islands and continental fragments. In this way, Iceland is considered part of Europe and Madagascar part of Africa, extrapolating the concept to its extreme. Some geographers group the Australasian continental plate with other islands in the Pacific into one continent called Oceania. This divides the entire land surface of the Earth into continents or quasi-continents. Separation of continents The ideal criterion that each continent be a discrete land mass is commonly relaxed due to historical conventions. Of the seven most commonly recognized continents, only Antarctica and Australia are completely separated from other continents. Several continents have defined not as absolutely distinct bodies but as more or less discrete masses of land. Asia and Africa are joined by the Isthmus of Suez, and North and South America by the Isthmus of Panama. In both cases, there is no complete separation of these land masses by water. Both these isthmuses are very narrow compared to the bulk of the land masses they unite. North America and South America are treated as separate continents in the seven-continent model. However, they may also be viewed as a single continent known as America or the Americas. This viewpoint was common in the United States until World War II and remains prevalent in some Asian six-continent models. This remains the more common vision in Latin American countries, Spain, Portugal, France, Italy and Greece where they are taught as a single continent. The criterion of a discrete land mass is completely disregarded if the continuous land mass of Eurasia is classified as two separate continents, Europe and Asia. 
physiographically, Europe and South Asia are peninsulas of the Eurasian landmass. However, Europe is widely considered a continent with its comparatively large land area of 10,180,000 square kilometers, while South Asia, with less than half that area, is considered a subcontinent. The alternative view, in geology and geography, that Eurasia is a single continent results in a six-continent view of the world. Some view separation of Eurasia into Europe and Asia as a residue of Eurocentrism. In physical, cultural and historical diversity, China and India are comparable to the entire European landmass, not to a single European country. However, for historical and cultural reasons, the view of Europe as a separate continent continues in several categorizations. If continents are defined strictly as discrete land masses, embracing all the contiguous land of a body, then Asia, Europe and Africa form a single continent which may be referred to as Afro-Eurasia. This produces a four-continent model consisting of Afro-Eurasia, America, Antarctica and Australia. When sea levels were lower during the Pleistocene Ice Ages, greater areas of continental shelf were exposed as dry land, forming land bridges. At those times Australia New Guinea was a single, continuous continent. Likewise the Americas and Afro-Eurasia were joined by the Bering Land Bridge. Other islands such as Great Britain were joined to the mainlands of their continents. At that time there were just three discrete continents, Afro-Eurasia America, Antarctica, and Australia New Guinea. Number of continents There are numerous ways of distinguishing the continents. The seven-continent model is usually taught in the United States, China, India, the Philippines, parts of Western Europe and most English-speaking countries, including Australia and England. The six-continent combined Eurasia model is mostly used in Russia, Eastern Europe, and Japan. The six-continent combined America model is used in France and its former colonies, Italy, Portugal, Spain, Romania, Latin America, Greece, and some other parts of Europe. A five-continent model is obtained from the six-continent model by excluding Antarctica as uninhabited. This is used for example in the Olympic Charter. The terms Oceania or Australasia are sometimes substituted for Australia to denote a region encompassing the Australian continent and various islands in the Pacific Ocean that are not included in the seven-continent model. For example, the Atlas of Canada names Oceania, as does the model taught in France, Italy, Greece, the Ibero-American countries, China, and South Korea. Area and Population the following table summarizes area and population of each continent using the seven-continent model, sorted by decreasing area. The total land area of all continents is 148,647,000 square kilometers, or 29.1% of Earth's surface, highest and lowest points. The following table lists the seven continents with their highest and lowest points on land, sorted in decreasing highest points. The lowest exposed points are given for North America and Antarctica. The lowest non-submarine bedrock elevations in these continents are the trough beneath Jacobs Howen Glacier and Bentley Subglacial Trench, but these are covered by kilometers of ice. Some sources list the Kumar Menich Depression as the geological border between Europe and Asia. This would place the Caucasus outside of Europe, thus making Mont Blanc in the Grayan Alps the highest point in Europe. The lowest point would still be the shore of the Caspian Sea. Other divisions Supercontinents Aside from the conventionally known continents, the scope and meaning of the term continent varies. Supercontinents, largely in evidence earlier in the geological record, are land masses that comprise more than one craton or continental core. These have included Laurasia, Gondwana, Valbara, Kenorland, Colombia, Rodinia, and Pangaea. Subcontinents Certain parts of continents are recognized as subcontinents, particularly those on different tectonic plates from the rest of the continent. The most notable examples are the Indian subcontinent and the Arabian Peninsula. 
Greenland, generally reckoned as the world's largest island on the northeastern periphery of the North American plate, is sometimes referred to as a subcontinent. This is a significant departure from the more conventional view of a subcontinent as comprising a very large peninsula on the fringe of a continent, where the Americas are viewed as a single continent. It is divided into two subcontinents or three submerged continents. Some areas of continental crust are largely covered by the sea and may be considered submerged continents. Notable examples are Zealandia, emerging from the sea primarily in New Zealand and New Caledonia, and the almost completely submerged Kerguelen continent in the southern Indian Ocean. Microcontinents Some islands lie on sections of continental crust that have rifted and drifted apart from a main continental land mass. While not considered continents because of their relatively small size, they may be considered microcontinents. Madagascar, the largest example, is usually considered an island of Africa but has been referred to as the eighth continent. From a biological perspective, botanical continents, continents may be defined differently for specific purposes. The Biodiversity Information Standards Organization has developed the World Geographical Scheme for Recording Plant Distributions, used in many international plant databases. This scheme divides the world into nine botanical continents. Some match the traditional geographical continents, but some differ significantly. Thus the Americas are divided between Northern America and Southern America rather than between North America and South America. History of the concept Early concepts of the Old World continents The first distinction between continents was made by ancient Greek mariners who gave the names Europe and Asia to the lands on either side of the waterways of the Aegean Sea, the Dardanelles Strait, the Sea of Marmara, the Bosphorus Strait and the Black Sea. The names were first applied just to lands near the coast and only later extended to include the hinterlands. But the division was only carried through to the end of navigable waterways and, beyond that point the Hellenic geographers never succeeded in laying their finger on any inland feature in the physical landscape that could offer any convincing line for partitioning an indivisible Eurasia. Ancient Greek thinkers subsequently debated whether Africa should be considered part of Asia or a third part of the world. Division into three parts eventually came to predominate. From the Greek viewpoint, the Aegean Sea was the center of the world, Asia lay to the east, Europe to the north and west, and Africa to the south. The boundaries between the continents were not fixed. Early on, the Europe-Asia boundary was taken to run from the Black Sea along the Rioni River in Georgia. Later it was viewed as running from the Black Sea through Kerch Strait, the Sea of Azov and along the Don River in Russia. The boundary between Asia and Africa was generally taken to be the Nile River. Herodotus in the 5th century BC, however, objected to the unity of Egypt being split into Asia and Africa and took the boundary to lie along the western border of Egypt, regarding Egypt as part of Asia. He also questioned the division into three of what is really a single land mass, a debate that continues nearly two and a half millennia later. Eratosthenes, in the 3rd century BC, noted that some geographers divided the continents by rivers, thus considering them islands. Others divided the continents by isthmuses, calling the continents peninsulas. These latter geographers set the border between Europe and Asia at the isthmus between the Black Sea and the Caspian Sea, and the border between Asia and Africa at the isthmus between the Red Sea and the mouth of Lake Bardawil on the Mediterranean Sea. Through the Roman period and the Middle Ages, a few writers took the Isthmus of Suez as the boundary between Asia and Africa, but most writers continued to consider it the Nile or the western border of Egypt. In the Middle Ages, the world was usually portrayed on T and O maps, with the T representing the waters dividing the three continents. 
By the middle of the 18th century, the fashion of dividing Asia and Africa at the Nile, or at the Great Katabay Muse, the boundary between Egypt and Libya, farther west, had even then scarcely passed away. European arrival in the Americas Christopher Columbus sailed across the Atlantic Ocean to the West Indies in 1492, sparking a period of European exploration of the Americas. But despite four voyages to the Americas, Columbus never believed he had reached a new continent. He always thought it was part of Asia. In 1501, Amerigo Vespucci and Gonzalo Coelho attempted to sail around what they considered the southern end of the Asian mainland into the Indian Ocean passing through Fernando de Norona. After reaching the coast of Brazil, they sailed a long way further south along the coast of South America, confirming that this was a land of continental proportions and that it also extended much further south than Asia was known to. On return to Europe, an account of the voyage, called Mundus Novus, was published under Vespucci's name in 1502 or 1503 although it seems that it had additions or alterations by another writer. Regardless of who penned the words, Mundus Nobis credited Vespucci with saying, I have discovered a continent in those southern regions that is inhabited by more numerous people and animals than I Europe, or Asia or Africa. The first known explicit identification of part of the Americas as a continent like the other three. Within a few years the name of New World began appearing as a name for South America on world maps, such as the Oliveriana map of around 1504-1505. Maps of this time though, still showed North America connected to Asia and showed South America as a separate land. In 1507 Martin Waldsey Muller published a world map, Universalis Cosmographia, which was the first to show North and South America as separate from Asia and surrounded by water. A small inset map above the main map explicitly showed for the first time the Americas being east of Asia and separated from Asia by an ocean, as opposed to just placing the Americas on the left end of the map and Asia on the right end. In the accompanying book Cosmographia Introduction, Ward C. Muller noted that the Earth is divided into four parts, Europe, Asia, Africa and the fourth part, which he named America, after Amerigo Vespucci's first name. On the map, the word America was placed on part of South America. The word continent from the 16th century the English noun continent was derived from the term continent land, meaning continuous or connected land and translated from the Latin terra continents. The noun was used to mean a connected or continuous tract of land or mainland. It was not applied only to very large areas of land. In the 17th century, references were made to the continents of Isle of Man, Ireland and Wales and in 1745 to Sumatra. The word continent was used in translating Greek and Latin writings about the three parts of the world. Although in the original languages no word of exactly the same meaning as continent was used, while continent was used on the one hand for relatively small areas of continuous land, on the other hand geographers again raised Herodotus's query about why a single large land mass should be divided into separate continents. In the mid-17th century Peter Halen wrote in his cosmography that a continent is a great quantity of land, not separated by any sea from the rest of the world, as the whole continent of Europe, Asia, Africa. In 1727 Ephraim Chambers wrote in his Cyclopedia, the world is ordinarily divided into two grand continents, the old and the new, and in his 1752 atlas, Emmanuel Bowen defined a continent as a large space of dry land comprehending many countries all joined together, without any separation by water. Thus Europe, Asia, and Africa is one great continent, as America is another. However, the old idea of Europe, Asia and Africa as parts of the world ultimately persisted with these being regarded as separate continents. Beyond four continents from the late 18th century some geographers started to regard North America and South America as two parts of the world, making five parts in total. Overall though the fourfold division prevailed well into the 19th century.
Europeans discovered Australia in 1606, but for some time, it was taken as part of Asia. By the late 18th century some geographers considered it a continent in its own right, making it the sixth. In 1813 Samuel Butler wrote of Australia as New Holland, an immense island, which some geographers dignify with the appellation of another continent, and the Oxford English Dictionary was just as equivocal some decades later. Antarctica was sighted in 1820 and described as a continent by Charles Wilkes on the United States Exploring Expedition in 1838. The last continent identified, although a great, Antarctic, landmass had been anticipated for millennia. An 1849 atlas labeled as Antarctica as a continent but few atlases did so until after World War II. From the mid-19th century, atlases published in the United States more commonly treated North and South America as separate continents, while atlases published in Europe usually considered them one continent. However, it was still not uncommon for American atlases to treat them as one continent up until World War II. From the 1950s, most U.S. geographers divided the Americas into two continents. With the addition of Antarctica, this made the seven-continent model. However, this division of the Americas never appealed to Latin Americans, who saw their region spanning an America as a single landmass. And there the conception of six continents remains, as it does in scattered other countries. Some geographers regard Europe and Asia together as a single continent, dubbed Eurasia. In this model, the world is divided into six continents, with North America and South America considered separate continents.